Hello, I've had several requests for these adapters. I think they're definitely interesting and certainly something to look into. So today are two adapters again. The ThunderGo 380 watt USB mega adapter and the Sabrent 252 watt adapter. The more reasonable choice. The video is a bit later because I had to come up with some more test setups to be able to fully load these chargers. I pushed my AC power supply to the limit too. These two are similar in that they both have eight USB ports. The distribution of ports is different and the modes of operation are different and how they negotiate power is different, but they're kind of similar in that they're both very high power USB adapters. I mean, 250 watts is already a lot, but 380 watts in one USB adapter? I think it's a legit number. We'll find out if it can keep that power level up or if it's just another overheating brick. Efficiency, voltages, and more will be checked throughout the video. It's gonna get technical, so ask questions if you have them. There is an affiliate link which earns me a couple percent, but costs you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. The ThunderGo 380 watt is up first. This adapter is available under a bunch of different names, with Tobias being one. At the time of writing, it's half price on Amazon also, but that doesn't mean go get it. This adapter is a fairly large USB brick. It's certainly made for that at home desktop charging of several devices, or maybe a media wagon on the go. The power cable is removable. In general, there are a few things I look for on an adapter. The safety listing, of course, is a main feature. This is usually some other company's marking on the device. This mark is usually an indication that the device will fail more safely and generally won't cause harm to the user. This device lacks that, and it also lacks the six in a circle which at this power level generally isn't included anyway. It could still comply with requirements, but that will get checked out in the data section. So this adapter has a three pin AC mains power connector. Is the third pin connected? The answer is yes, it is directly connected through the USB output pins. This isn't a safety violation, but it's the choice they made. It actually may help in case of a fault in the device. The isolation will be checked later on. Upon plugging the adapter in, the idle power consumption is a little on the high side, and it also bounced around quite a bit. This is also normal for larger power adapters. I did some tests with this power adapter with a bunch of Apple cables plugged in. This is to see how it handles low level power devices and if that increases the power levels to unreasonable amounts. Everything seems okay here, but the idle power consumption is pretty high to begin with, so no energy efficiency mark for a reason. The adapter is fairly capable though, and I've seen this before on non-safety listed adapters. They generally perform better than the safety listed counterparts. This likely has a lot to do with transformers. The overall modes of operation are plentiful two ports simultaneously at 140 watts with no slowdown. The efficiency is high, the performance is good. If you need a lot of watts, this is looking good on paper. The ports do renegotiate after the first three USB-C ports. The power distribution does seem to prioritize the first three ports, then reduce power levels as you add ports after that, but it seems to do so in a fairly smart way. No complaints here. Just know that adding devices after three will cause the power to turn off momentarily on some ports. The detailed data for this adapter shows that it won't be compliant with the energy efficiency standards because of the idle power consumption. This is true on both 120 and 230 volt modes. This is high, but if you add up four other adapters this could replace, it's not terrible. If you plan to use this to power one laptop, then it's terrible, and this isn't the correct device. Context matters. The efficiency on this adapter did reasonably well though, even at the 30 or so watt output power level. Is it as efficient as the best 30 watt adapters here? No, but it's not really the intent of this device. This is an I need a lot of power now device and it can deliver that. In the thermal testing, the device stayed on. It does have a fan in it. It makes noise, so it's not something you're gonna wanna have in your bedroom. I actually couldn't hear the fan over all the test gear whirring away, so it's not insanely loud, but you will hear it. It does still get hot. Even the unused USB ports get very hot. With the fan, it was moving a tiny amount of air, and I mean tiny. They didn't optimize the air openings to actually provide good cooling. Not a surprise for an inexpensive device. Still, it does work at its advertised power, so beating everyone else. The isolation will be coming a bit later. Next up is the Sabrent 252 watt USB power adapter. 
This adapter is a bit different in that it has four USB-C ports and four USB-A ports. I first heard of this in a level two Jeff video and then a bunch of people asked about it in the comments, emails, the usual spots. So I picked one up to check it out. This adapter is surprisingly compact for what it is. 252 watts just to be marketing more than 250 watts. I'm gonna call it 250 watts, which is what it can do from the USB-C ports. The device does have a safety listing through UL, so it is checking the boxes of meeting basic compliance and regulation requirements. There is again, no mark for efficiency on this product, and again, at this power level, it is common to not see it. But it may meet the requirements anyway. In looking at the fairly comprehensive user manual for this thing, they talk about the power modes and distribution of power, and it gets really complicated. So I just took pictures of the user manual, and here's the first part of the table, and yeah, it's a bit confusing. This is the first four ports, bank A, and then with the other four ports, bank B. Anyway, if you want to take a closer look at these, pause to browse at your leisure. The main reason to get this device is because of the smarter power distribution. This device can keep power flowing within reason. I did a bunch of tests with the USB-A port and the USB-C ports to see when the voltage resets and when the power stays on. It looks like the power stays on with the USB-C port only being used. But when you add in a USB-A port, the power level has to decrease so the port resets then. If you aren't drawing more than 15 watts though, all the ports will stay on. So you can get 15 watts and no resets, which is very interesting. Another main feature of this device is the screen. It gives you the power levels of each USB port, and if you click through, you can see the details of each of the ports while operating. The screen appears to be quite accurate and does a good job tracking and indicating what each of the ports is doing. It is a little annoying that it turns off a lot. It doesn't seem to really affect the power consumption, so it would be nice if it was just on or dim, not off. But of screens in power adapters, this is actually one of the better ones I've seen. This charger has quite a list of features. The 12 volt mode is present and looking at the overall efficiency numbers, the charger does have a little lower efficiency level. Hopefully this doesn't mean thermals run away. The idle power is better than the Thunder Go, but it's still on the high side for an adapter like this. It does seem like they used a bit of that power to be smarter about the power negotiation though. The overall performance of this charger does show that its lower power level efficiency is quite a bit lower. So if you are only powering a few low wattage devices, this is not a great choice. The efficiency does pick up at about 50 watts out though. On 230 volts, the efficiency is a little better as expected. This and the Thunder Go do both have power factor correction. What's that? PFC, or power factor correction, is a technique to make sure that the current consumed by the device is the same shape as the voltage. These help improve efficiency, and it's important that these line up at higher power levels. The Sabrent does have an issue here. While it's a bit of an odd shape for sure, at least it mostly lines up. Better than a lot of the others I have seen for most of the operation time. But every once in a while, it gets mad and goes into crazy mode, doing this instead. The PFC is turning on and off randomly. It's like it forgot what it's supposed to be doing. Fully turning the device off and back on fixes this and it returns to normal operation. But there's no real way for the user to know that the device sometimes doesn't work correctly. This could create a long-term issue. Thermally, this charger did fine. It gets hot, no doubt. But it does have the vents on the side, so it can get at least some of that heat out. It's a hot potato, but it can certainly handle the rated watts, as long as the PFC circuit stays on. Okay, time to compare these chargers. These chargers are big ones, so I'm going to compare to what I've tested for larger chargers. The Anchor 240 watt, the Ugreen 300 watt, and of course, a few others. The Thunder Go is the biggest charger I've ever tested though, and it was a challenge for sure. In terms of isolation, which is the thing separating the dangerous side, the mains, from you on the low voltage side, these both do okay. The Thunder Go does have a direct earth connection to the USB ground pins on the ports, so keep that in mind. The leakage will be shunted through this path. In either case though, nothing really sets off any alarm bells here. The Thunder Go without a safety listing is a bit of an unknown in terms of performance at higher voltage, like transient events. In terms of the weight, the Thunder Go is actually quite lightweight. The cable weighs about 100 grams and the adapter with cable makes it one of the lightest with the power level. It is of course not small at all. 
The Sabrent is quite the opposite. It's a bit heavier, the cable is about 70 grams, but the overall adapter is quite small. Not quite the size of the Anker 240 watt adapter though. In terms of value, the Thundergo crushes everyone. It's also on sale for half the price at the time of upload, which is crazy cheap. It's like a fire sale or something. The device can save some of that cost by not having a safety listing, but across the sale of many units, it's not that much money. But it's probably not too high volume of a product. The Sabrent is a strong contender in the price market considering it meets all the requirements. When looking at the idle graph for these, regardless of what voltage you are using, they're all on the higher side. Still all sub 1 watt if you don't have anything plugged in, but still all a bit much for sitting around doing nothing. The Anchor Prime 240 watt adapter is really an example of how to do low idle power consumption right for a high power multi-port device. It's impressive still. The average power consumption graph is more spread out. Here we see the Sabre and take the lower spots on the chart. It was still not terrible, greater than 90%, and stronger numbers at the full power level, so suffering a bit of single number rating itis here. The other end of the scale, the Thundergo, is running away with it though, taking some of the top spots for efficiency. This even has a fan running and got these higher numbers. The efficiency is on par with the Apple 140 watt adapter, which is a very efficient adapter. Conclusion time. I may use the Thundergo for some of my general testing needs because it has the power level and it stays on. The main thing is without a safety listing, I'm never going to leave it plugged in unintended. The other issue is the higher idle power consumption, so you shouldn't really be leaving this around doing nothing anyway. Overall, the efficiency is very impressive though. I've seen this before from other adapters without safety listings. With its fan and the noise that comes with it, it can stay on though. So it says 380 watts on the box and it can do 380 watts, which puts it a good bit ahead of its competitors. The outputs are earth connected and the isolation checker didn't find anything out of line for AC leakage current, so it seems okay. Would it survive a transient test or pass RF interference test or other things? No idea. The Sabrent is an interesting device. It has very clever power distribution, which is very welcome in a higher power USB brick. The split of the two sides is also smart because it lets you pick which ports are doing what and get the most out of the adapter without concerns of the power turning off. Now, if you want it as a device for all low power USB devices, it's kind of wasteful because at no negotiation, for example, five volt only mode, it's really only a 120 watt adapter, but it will power many five volt devices without complaint. For testing needs, the screen is nice and accurate. It has the safety listing. It has a lot of prerequisites for power adapters. It stays on and it has reasonable isolation. The idle power is on the higher side and the efficiency is not class leading, but as a test device or something you have on an off switch, it may make the grade. It's going to beat the pants off of a low-grade wall wart. That's about it. Two more power adapters. Let me know if one of these meets the requirement for you and what you think of these in the comments. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.